In that briefing, they identified an individual by the name of Robert Incorvaya, who was 51 years of age, and he was involved in a number of cases under the MCSO jurisdiction in which this individual had contacted women, females, in the area between 19th and 27th Avenues in Phoenix around the area of Northern, in about a one-mile square area is what uh, Sheriff Penzone said. Now, the detectives were able to develop probable cause, and they booked Corva uh, in Corvaya. His name is Robert in Corvaya. Let me spell that. It's Robert, common spelling, in Corvaya, I-N-C-O-R-V-A-I-A. They took him into custody and booked him into the Maricopa County Jail. Now, following his arrest, the sheriff's office contacted the Phoenix Police Department, and a number of our detectives met with their detectives to find out the information that they had. And then our detectives, some were who, who were from the uh, ch uh, Child Crimes Unit, the Adult Sex Crimes Unit, our HEAT Unit, which is our, traf uh, uh, our uh, human trafficking group, as well as our uh, uh, investigators from the Family Investigations Bureau. So they met with them and, and gathered information, and then almost in a mini task force within our department, they began to work to see what information they had, if it possibly there was an MO that matched. And they found that there were three cases within Phoenix's jurisdiction uh, that had occurred within the past three years, two involving a, a teenage girls and then one involving an adult female. And in those cases, the MO matched, and it appeared that that uh, in Corvaya was the suspect who had, in a similar manner, met the individuals in the area of 19th to 27th Avenue in Northern. As he contacted those individuals, he offered them a place to stay. Uh, and they accepted, got in the car, and they were taking to locations in Phoenix where they were held, they were uh, abused, assaulted both sexually and physically. So based upon that, they were able to develop probable cause utilizing the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office case to believe that Incorvaya was in fact the suspect in those three cases. Now yesterday on August the 6th, Phoenix police officers took Incorvaya into custody from the Maricopa County Jail or at the Maricopa County Jail and brought him back here to Phoenix Police Headquarters. That's where they interviewed him. Uh, he didn't refused not to be or chose not to be interviewed at that time. So again, based upon the probable cause that was developed, much in part due to the investigation conducted by the Maricopa County Attorney's Office, and they booked him back into jail. He was charged in, in conjunction with the three investigations we had in the city of Phoenix, uh, charged with 10 counts of sexual assault, six counts of aggravated assault, one count of kidnapping, one count of assault, and one count of threatening intimidating. Uh, but again, he was charged in conjunction with our investigations, that, and that was due in large part to the work of the men and women of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Uh, so again, he was, uh, Uncovaya was booked into jail yesterday on August the 6th. Are there any questions? Again, when the sheriff's office contacted us, the, the, the key thing that, that they found in their investigations was that Incorvaya would go and contact people that se seemed to be homeless or in need of a place of, uh, to stay. He would offer them, as I understand it from the briefing yesterday, he would offer them food and a place to, to shower, and then he would take them out of the city of Phoenix into the area of uh, the jurisdiction of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, and that's where he would hold them and keep uh, and commit the crimes that he did. Again, he assaulted them both physically and sexually. Those cases were similar to three that we found that we were able to link back to him based upon the MO, and again, based upon the information we had, plus in large part due to the information the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office detectives uncovered in their investigations were able to uh, determine that there was probable cause that he had committed the crimes in our city in our three cases. Questions? Oh, 
excuse me. Great, great question. This investigation is still ongoing, and we are still trying to find out if, if there are any other cases that may fit this MO. And we would encourage anybody who has information concerning the three, the three incidents I mentioned, and again, uh, if you have any information concerning this individual, if you'd please contact the Phoenix Police Department. If you have any information that might, that might be of interest to us, uh, it may be information that's heard second or third hand. If they would contact the Phoenix Police Department, uh, they can contact us at 602-262-6151, which is our non-information number, or they can call Silent Witness. The number for Silent Witness is 480-WITNESS. Uh, for Spanish, it's 480-TESTIGO. Yeah, that is correct. So they were, so the women is my understanding, they were found in the area, uh, in that area between 19th and 27th Avenue. Uh, in some cases, they were found to not have uh, a place to stay. So they were out on the streets and they were contacted and they were lured into, a, into his company, into his vehicle by the, the promise of having a place to stay. Okay, I have one case in 2017 and one case 2018, and then the most recent for us is in 2019. Did they come as, late as, part with, as the investigators were investigating them, there was there were some uh, two of them were reported belated after the fact quite a bit, uh, and then another one we're, uh, we're we're still gathering information and we're waiting for information to come back from from our. Uh, I would say it's fair to say that I would say it's fair to say that there are some who may not come forward, due to the nature of the the profile of the individuals that that, that this man targeted as his victims. Uh, sometimes they're hard to get a hold of for us to do any follow up investigation. But again, two of them were were belated, uh, and then there was one that was uh, not belated. But we're continuing to work on that case. But again, based upon the information from the Maricopa County Sheriff's. If it's a belated case, it's it's very very difficult to get any kind of DNA. Right, and that's the thing that matched up is these our Phoenix cases started with this gentleman picking them up in the in that general area, and so that is part of the MO that matched part of the things that, that led us to believe that, that it is the same suspect and to develop probable cause to charge him with those crimes. We don't know if there are other women and that's why we keep it very broad and ask if anyone has information to please contact the Phoenix Police Department. There was a, there was, I don't know that it was necessarily a county island on the, on the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office cases. I know that it was in the jurisdiction of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. They were contacted within the city of Phoenix. The cases that I'm speaking of today, specifically, they were contacted in that same general area, but they were taken to locations within the city of Phoenix. That's where the crimes occurred. And when those, where those crimes occur, is where the actual the, is the jurisdiction of the law enforcement that that investigates them. Got it. Yes, sir. The information that we're talking about, uh, uh, specifically the Phoenix cases, deal with Phoenix. Yesterday at the press conference uh, that the sheriff spoke at, he led me to believe that there are other agencies that are looking as well. I, I think he specifically named Glendale, but I'm not, uh, I don't have any information concerning any investigations they're involved in. Uh, we're dealing with a 51 year old man, and I don't know when. Uh, he started committing these crimes. I can tell you that we have one that, that we believe occurred in 2017. Thank you, guys. Polo en español.
sí, yo puedo. Audrey, and I'll catch you up real quick in English, okay? <laughs>